right, so anxiety has pretty much ruled my entire life, um, social anxiety specifically, from high school through college into my 20s and 30s. Um, I was just emotionally isolated from everybody. I, I missed out on so much life experience. I did one thing in contrast to my social anxiety, and that was to pursue my dreams of being a singer-songwriter. It took me till I was 27 to get up the courage to sing in front of anybody. Um, 28, 29, I got a band together, started touring around. It still wasn't an enjoyable experience. It took me multiple whiskeys to get through any show, um, and it was uncomfortable at best. Four years ago, I was on tour with my band in Florida, and I got a call from my wife that my father had passed away. My dad was my best friend, best man at my wedding, just a happy, joyous soul. Um, he periodically had cl- uh, bouts of clinical depression throughout his adult life. It would, it would be like once a decade. It would strike, and it, it was ugly. Um, his entire joyful persona would just be just engulfed in, in depression. And so 12 months prior to this phone call from my wife, my dad had been in the midst of a really ugly battle. He lost 100 pounds. His hair turned gray. Um, yeah, it, it, it was, I, I can't underscore how, how, uh, how ugly it was. And, and so my wife had called to tell me that my father had committed suicide in the backyard of my family house in a shed. Um, I was devastated, as you can imagine. My bandmates immediately rallied around me and, and ushered me into the back of the tour van, canceled our, our shows, drove me through the night from, from Florida back to Maryland. I had no one to take care of, no one to take care of me. So for 15 hours, without any distractions, I just cried. I got home, I walked inside, and it was like a scene from a movie. My my mom was just wailing. My wife and and the few family members that were there were crying in looks of disbelief and just distraught. Everyone. Something compelled me to go into the backyard to the shed by myself. So I walked walked out there. As I approached the shed, I noticed on the ground there was this piece of crime scene tape that the police had left behind. So my immediate inclination was to grab it, put it in my pocket, and hide it. If I, if I hid it, it didn't happen. That's how I handled my own social anxiety my whole life. Never talked about it, not to anyone, barely admitted it to myself. That's how he had handled my dad's depression. He was of the generation that mental illness was a weakness, not an illness. So we didn't talk about it, save for a few doctors and, and the close family. Uh, yeah, so... So that was, my, that was my immediate inclination, just pick it up and hide it. But, but something happened. The second I picked up that crime scene tape, an immediate, profound piece just, just took me over. Um, the only phrase that, that I can offer that does it any justice is the piece that passes all understanding. It made no sense. It it's, didn't stand to reason. I was, I was in the very spot where 16 or 17 hours my dad had taken his own life, and I was at peace. And I was full of understanding. I understood his illness. I understood his suicide. I understood my own uh, struggles. It was like I was standing, you know, 10,000 feet above and just saw the big picture of everything. So I walked back inside, and my wife was immediately taken back. I had walked out to the shed, tears running down my face, and I came back calm, cool, and collected. My mom asked me, what are we going to do? What are we going to tell people? Because, again, we hadn't told anybody about my dad's depression, much less his suicide. Without a second thought, I said, we're going to tell the truth. Um, my mom asked me to write my dad's eulogy, and so right then and there, I sat down and I wrote a three-page eulogy in ten minutes. I didn't think about it. I didn't edit it. I didn't correct it. It just poured out of me. It was an extension of this, this peace and this understanding that I had, which carried over a few days later when I gave the eulogy at the church. I was completely honest through and through. The most beautiful thing happened... At the end of the ceremony, almost no one left. They all came up one by one, and they offered their condolences, of course, but they they proceeded to thank me for my honesty and tell me their own stories of depression and anxiety, suicide, attempted suicide in their family. It was this beautiful catharsis. It was like the floodgates opened, and all of a sudden it was okay to talk about it. And for someone like me that had been so isolated for so long, it was just a, a truly healing experience. One of those interactions very serendipitously introduced me to meditation, which has become a cornerstone of my life over these last four years. And through meditation, I've come to understand what happened to me at the shed that day is that the tragedy of the moment, the shock, whatever it was, it thrust me completely 
and fully into the present moment. And even though it was a very tragic present moment, I was there in the here and now. I wasn't lost somewhere in my head, some make-believe place about tomorrow or yesterday. Um, and so, so I really believe that, that had my dad been introduced to meditation earlier in his life, his mental illness would have run a very different course because what I've come to find out as meditation has been a cornerstone of my life for these four years is I've more and more been able to live my life from the present moment. And as I do that, and as I've done that, my own depression and my own anxieties just seem to fall away. I play my shows now and I have joy in my heart rather than this paralyzing fear of judgment in my head. I'm standing here right now talking to you guys. I mean, this I would have avoided this my entire life, and I actually steered myself into it. And so that was my leap of faith from my head to my heart, from any variety of places that my brain could conjure up to right here, right now, in this present moment with you guys. Thank you very much. And Jessica said I, I could say something quickly about the Ed Lally Foundation. Um, during, that, uh, during that eulogy, I, uh, I said we're going to start a foundation in my dad's name, but honestly, I had no idea what we were going to do. It was like a knee-jerk reaction. I just wanted to help people that w- would potentially one day be in a situation that we're in. Um, so it sat there. We created it, had a website, and it just sat there for a couple of years until I went through this own process of meditation and healing myself. So the Ed Lally Foundation, we promote... We raise awareness, but we also promote meditation, um, yoga, and even improv comedy, anything that teaches you to be in the present moment. So if anyone at all is ever hurting or struggling or knows someone, I'm here. My family's here. Our foundation is here for you guys.